Everybody driving the Chronicler. How's everyone doing today? Today I got an interesting game for you guys. So um, I came across this surprisingly when I was looking up uh, Warhammer 40k, if you can believe it. I was thinking about doing a uh, doing a play of one of the games. I've just recently been learning some stuff about it. And figured yeah, I'd be interested to play it. And uh, for some reason, this came up in the search results. I have no idea how. So don't ask me. <laughs> but yeah, it, it popped up and um, I couldn't help but look at it and, and think I want to play this. <laughs> you remember that game I, I, I uh, played a while ago? I played the demo of it. Backbone, I think it was called. Um, yeah, if you thought that was weird, we're, we're just going down the rabbit hole today, buddy. Let me tell you. <laughs> Enjoy. Dead men are heavier than broken hearts. Okay. I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. <laughs> Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Chicken police. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. This is the probably the weirdest thing I've seen on Steam. It's in our nature. Ever. And I love I'm it. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. So yeah, this is a noir-style detective game go wrong? where you play a chicken in an anthropomorphic world. I'm going to enjoy this. As weird as it's going to be, I'm going to enjoy it. Oh dear. Yes, I made that pun. Ah, oh, crap. My office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. Possibly. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time. So I had to give her a chance. Alright, before we move on with this, I hope you guys are going to enjoy this as much as I am, because right now, I... This is absurdity, and I love it. I'm definitely loving the fact that they went with, like, realistic photos of, like, detectives with animal heads and I'm, I'm loving a lot of the puns that are coming through this let's get her going I, I, this <laughs> and the fact that they're going with like the old uh, noir cop movie thing like the like the like the in, like the internal monologue I promised myself I'd write a novel one day all right let's listen to her Wait, I didn't hear that. Legs that go on for days. 
<laughs> Deep, dark eyes. Silky skin and voice. You're in big trouble, pal. Yeah. Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah. Miss Deborah Ibanez. Okay. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Oh, really? Why would you come to? Why would a deer come to see a chicken on a rainy night like this? Look, Miss, I work for the police, and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. You know, judging by the fact that you look like, um... You see the pearls, the dress. Honestly, and just about the saying, this does seem like it could be in like the 1930s or something. I imagine she would be the type of drink because she looks like she would have at least a decent amount of money. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. True. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. The woman insists she doesn't drink, and then she's like... He's like, oh, could you at least have a sherry? And he, and then all of a sudden she's like, oh, well, if you insist, about the bourbon, please. <laughs> but, mm, I guess if you're gonna give in, give in to the hard stuff. Huh. Thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. Did she go through the liquor cabinet? I bet she did while she was here. I mean, she was in here waiting. So come on. Spill it from the beginning. Let's hear the story. So Deborah Imenez, or I Ibenez, I'm not. So what was her her story here? She runs errands for employer sophisticated lady, but I don't think she's from a particularly wealthy or influential family. Deborah Ibanez. She's an Impala. Female. Special feature. Pretty and fragile. Nothing too special. I don't even know what these papers are. Okay. Let's uh, talk to her some more. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. That's, that's certainly escalation. First, letters. Then, wine bottle. First two sound like they could be gifts. Then a brick through the window, and finally they painted it on the walls. That's just that's escalation. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Sorry, my phone went off. Okay, what are the questions we're gonna ask her? Please, that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay, one thing I'm definitely finding annoying with this is it's not continuing on with the conversation. Ask questions now, I guess. Who wants to let you know about the suspect? Is he or she suspicious? Concentrate on that. Subject, John Doe. This fellow is rather suspicious. I need to concentrate on that. Focus, suspicious, suppression, suspicious. Okay. <laughs> what? What, what? What's this? He's suspicious. I'm suspicious. Why are you suspicious? 
Gather impressions from the suspect. Every impression adds a new question line. Okay. Detect meter is your best friend. It shows how well the question is going. Keep it on the positive side, okay? Alright. Blah, blah, blah. I like that. 100%. Okay. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Is he asking her questions, or is he going to take her, take her to the bedroom for the night? So, who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? That is true. I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. So he carries out her employer's whims. Now... Would the employer trust her to get a detective involved, or maybe there's something more to this, who knows? You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Uh -huh. Impression doubtful. Okay. We should probably ask where she lives just so we get a general idea of where her and her mistress are. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I. I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? Yeah, let's uh, get to the story here. I mean, aside from the fact that apparently her lawyer is getting threats, we don't know too much. I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. Yeah. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. Why would she think it was important to me if it was important to her? A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. Yeah, it's, it's all very questionable, but... You know what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Okay. Um... Why'd you come visit me? Why not your employer yourself? Can the employer not come by themselves, or...? Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately. Only if she really has to. Makes sense, considering she's getting harassed with, like, messages and that being sent to her. Understandable, she wouldn't want to leave her house. Fear of her own life, imagine. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So, she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. Okay, there was a little glitch there. I'm not sure if that's going to show up in the audio. Point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. I think these people come here to meet me. Yeah, that would probably be a. How did she get the address? She was probably told by her employer. Now, how her employer got the address, I don't know. 
What exactly did you expect by coming here to meet me? I expected your help, just like my mistress said. Well, that's very nice. But have you seen this neighborhood? Have you seen this wreck called a hotel? Who were you hoping to find in a place like this? Someone reliable. Well, I am reliable. And discreet? That's right. Discreet. There's the word. You really want to listen to. So, in other words, they want the problem solved, but in a way that will stay out of the papers. And thorough? And again, okay, I don't like the way she said that, because that, that, the way she said that could mean multiple things. No question about that. And has a heart of gold. Okay, now he's just trying to butter him up. <laughs> okay, let's stop it right there. <laughs> You cut out if that's gonna work. Uh, this is too risky. I can't take the case. Let's put any of her film here, okay? No, wait, is that like what would she have done next or? Are you in some sort of jam? Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Things better left unsaid permanently, or are things better left unsaid until we can show you? Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Yeah, and I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. Okay. I think this whole thing's a little suspicious. Honestly, it does sound very suspicious, and I think we should probably ask her, her, her take on that. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino, I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. Mm -hmm. You see, we're starting to understand each other. Probably should ask her. If she won't come clean, then what's the point of all this? If you won't come clean, what's the point of all this? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if we don't know anything, we're not gonna be able to solve the problem. But, Mr. Featherland. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I'm way too old for this game. Please, just think again. For me and my mistress's sake. But what exactly would be the. I'm kinda wondering why someone would be after her mistress, though. You think it is it like a business issue? Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. And why does she trust me exactly? I don't believe she knows him. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him, Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Ah, from Null Ties. Okay, this is interesting. Exactly. And he's a possum. Okay. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Okay. Let's see. Um, so far, this is definitely interesting. And the idea that she's tied to a criminal. 
I'm actually interested in this. We want to see how this progresses. Why don't you take it to the police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Okay. Well, okay. Let's see. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. Okay. She knows Molly? Who's Molly? I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Guessing Molly's an old girlfriend is. Mr. Featherland? Yeah, apparently you're speechless. Santino, are you all right? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Really? Don't play innocent with me. So who's Molly and but, why is she important? All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. I mean, I could theorize it's a girlfriend or something. Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club, especially on New Year's Eve. Right? Up on New Year's Eve, okay. I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko, but there's one small problem, Mr. Hey, what's that? Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. Well, I guess that makes sense. How did you know? Be a bad idea for a Lord's experience, man. Noble detective being oh, on the person. Please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. Wait, who was that? So who's Molly? I should must know his wife. Okay. So why is it weird that he heard about her now? Like, has his wife been missing? I'm guessing that's it. She disappeared at some point? Serves best to Miss Deborah Ben as a lawyer. Okay. Let's look at the people. Lewis. 555-932. Five, 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 Take her home. Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No. no, no. Of course not, Sonny. Old friend, what's up? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. 
the last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. Wait, so he owns a hotel, but there's only two people living here? Him and me? The fuck? Okay. I mean, you'd think some people would be looking for a nice piece of property. Or even, like, if he was renting out those, like, apartments. He'd be able to make money that way. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. You know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. New function map. Okay, I see. I need to grab my stuff first. Where's your stuff? Behind that door lies the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles. Okay. I need a secretary. I need to grab my stuff first. And which stuff would that be? I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm gonna end up dead in here whether I like it or not. Okay. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real, the badge ain't. Chief Bloodboil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. <laughs> Lovely. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never yeah, know. Yeah, you never know. I mean what well, minute you're going to check on somebody, next thing you know, everything's going tits up. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in the city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. All right, let's go see Marty. So, we're going to... Uh scenes, limited scenes, are open for a specific duration, which is determined by the main story. Which if you are a completionist, be sure to visit all of them before you move on to the next main scene. Alright, I guess I'll do that. Alright. I like how the footage here is, is actual footage. Eve, and I was driving, half drunk risking my whole life's work, but still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same, and the 21 days the I had left is my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity.